So hi everyone, welcome to our second video in number theory. Um, in this video, we're going to continue what we have um, done with the last video. In the last video, we have done with the, the with the last theorem with our first theorem that's about the mean max that the, the the min of x y plus the max of x y equals x plus y. Now we're going to move forward from that lesson, and we're going to have now the summation notation. So the summation notation or sums such as um, a sub a, um, a sub um, k, a sub k plus 1, a sub something up until a sub n can be written in a compact form using what we call the summation notation. And we use this symbol. This is the Greek uppercase letter sigma, which denotes the word sum. Okay. I think you are uh, familiar with this in, with this um, symbol when we started or when you started with basic statistics since this is the the symbol for the sum of all terms, uh, especially in the mean. Okay, so the summation notation was introduced in 1772 by the French mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. Okay, so a typical term in the uh, sum above can be denoted as a sub i, that this is the sum. So the above sum is the sum of all the numbers a sub i as i runs from k to m. That is in this value. So this is our notation. The variable i is this is called the summation index. The values k and m are called the lower limit and the upper limit of the index i. The index i is also called a dummy variable. So we can use any variable as the index without affecting the whole sum itself. So we can say that um, in this particular notation, a sub i, where the sum of all a sub i's, where i runs from k to m, so is equal to First, we start with a sub, uh, um, a sub k because um, i runs from k. So this is our lower limit. So the k starts here. And we have, of course, we will sum everything. That's why we use the plus button, uh, the, the, the plus, the, the addition um, operation because this is a sum. We're going to sum an integer plus 1 from that a sub k. So that's why it became a sub k plus 1. We're going to continue the pattern up until we reach our upper limit m. So our last limit here, our last uh, value is m. It's actually m. Okay. Uh, better leave it that way. So let's have an example for this. So Okay, so say we have um, the summation of all j squared, where j um, runs from uh, minus 2 up until 3. Okay, so meaning we're going to have all the j's. This is our function j here. Um, and we're going to do the operation, the function, which j is, be, is, is using. So j is being squared here, as you can see. So we're going to square all the j's where j runs from minus 2 to positive 3. So if we're going to do that, we're going to start with our lower limit. Um, this, that is uh, minus 2. So this is equal to when you say uh, minus 2, that, that is where we will start. We will do the operation, which is squaring. And we're going to add 1 to that. plus minus 1, we want to do the squaring, so it's squared, plus minus 1 plus 1 is 0, squared plus um, 1 squared plus uh, 2, 2 squared plus 3 squared. And we were going to stop with this 3, since our upper limit is 3 over here. So we're going to operate this. What we have is this equal to uh, minus 2 squared is 4, uh, minus 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, um, 1 squared is 1, and we're going to have 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So if we're going to add all of these values, we have 4 plus 1 plus 1, that's going to give us 6, plus 4, uh, that's going to give us 10, plus 9, that's going to give us 19. 
sorry. And this is our answer, 19. Okay, so we're going to move from this example. We're going to have the index summation. So for the index summation, let me write it down. Index index summation. Yeah. Oh, so for index for the index summation. The summation notation can be extended to sequences with index sets i as their domains. So say, for example, we have the sum of a sub i, where i is inside a bigger um, index i. So where this i denotes something, okay? As i runs over all the values of i and i. So as an example, say we have um, i as equal to the big I, the index, is equal to 0, 1, 3, and 5. And let's say we're going to have, we're going to find the summation of, summation of 2i plus one, where for all i in i. So let's have that value, this is a plus sign. This is a plus sign. Okay, so let's have that. So we have um, this is equal to, so we're going to use all the i's and i's. Notice our the values of our index i is zero, one, three, and five. So we're going to have all the i's substitute the 0 here plus the 1 here plus the 3 here plus the 5 here. So what we have is uh, 2 times 0 plus 1 plus uh, what we have is 2 times 1 uh, plus 1 plus, let's put it here down below. 2 times 3 plus 1 and plus 2 times 5 plus 1. And if we're going to sum them up, this is equal to um, 2 times 0 plus 1 um, is equal to 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Uh, it is. Excuse me. So 1 plus 3 plus, uh, this is 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, 7 plus, this is 2 times 5, 10 plus 1, 11. So the answer here is 1 plus 3 is 4 plus um, 7, that's 11, plus 11, that's going to be 22. Okay, so that's for our indexed summations. Okay, again, for our index summations. Now let's have one example for this index summation. Let's make it a bit um, challenging. Okay, so one example for the index summation is, say we have the summation of all these, um, for all d greater than or equal to one. Okay, for all, everyone taking up number theory, um, there's an error in my module. I wrote there, um, d is less than or equal to one. This should be written as d is greater than or equal to 1. So kindly change the necessary things. Um, D is greater, than, is greater than or equal to 1, and D 
divides 6. So this means, what do you mean by this? What do you mean? So therefore, d divides 6 means d is a factor. It's a factor of 6. Okay, so d divides 6 is a factor of 6. So how can we answer that? We're going to sum all the values of d greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, such that d is a factor of 6. So what are the factors of 6? Um, right here, 6 can be um, written as 6 times 1. So we can see that 6 is greater than 1. That's check. 6 is divisible by 6. 6 divides 6, that is. So that, that's, that's correct. Um, one is equal to one, so this this um, this holds for this um, characteristic, and then one divide six, yes, because six divided by one is six. So we also have, of course, our classic three times two. Both of them are are greater than one, so this is okay for this property. And three divide six, yes, because 6 divided by 3 is 2, and likewise, 6 divided by 3 is, or rather, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So meaning, all of this are the factors of 6, which satisfies this condition. So what we have is this value is equal to um, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6. And furthermore, this is equal to 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3. That's 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. Okay. Uh, before we conclude this video, let's have this last one. This is the product notation. So let me write it down. So the product notation, um, just as the summation notation, is used to denote sums. So that is the product of a sub k times a sub k plus 1 times up until a sub n. This is denoted by our um, capital, the product symbol pi, that is the Greek capital letter pi. So we write this as the product of a sub i, where i runs from um, k say to m, so this is equal to a sub k times a sub k plus 1 times a sub, a sub m. So this is our product notation. So again, this i is our dummy variable. The following example illustrates the notation. So one particular example will be the factorial function, which arises in number theory, combinatorics and probability theory, um, which can be this defined as follows. So one example of product notation, we will use the, the factorial function. So factorial function. Um, we'll call that um, f of n equals n factorial. We read this as n factorial, uh, where by definition, um, we say that n factorial is equal to um, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. up until 2 times 1, uh, where we also say that 0 factorial by definition is equal to 1. OK, so using this function, this product notation, to denote this um, factorial function over here, so what we will write is we can say that f of n 
um, is equal to n factorial, which is equal to the product of all the k Oh, sorry. Product of all the k, um, where k is equal to k runs from one to n. Also, you know, do the the, the necessary um, changes there in the in the values. Okay. So as our last example before we end this video. So let's have an index um, notation in product notation. So let's be given the product of i plus j, um, where i, uh, the product of i plus j, where i and j is in i. And that i is strictly less than j, uh, where i is equal to 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so let's finish this now. So rewriting this, you can rewrite this. I won't rewrite it anymore. So we are asked to just, you know, add i plus j. And it should be strictly seen that i and j should be inside this i, this values here. And strictly, i will always be less than j. So let's try to denote value of i. i can be 2. So j can be 3, 5, 7. Since 3, 5, 7 are surely greater than 2. All of them are greater than 2. So let's have that. Um, if i is 2, so j is 3 times if i is 2, j can be 5. If i is 2, j can be 7. Oh, now, let's try to imagine if i is 3. So if i is 3, j can only be 5 or 7. So if i is 3, j can only be 5. Or j can only be 7. Um, the reason for this is, you know... Um, you cannot choose 2 as j since 2 is less than i. And lastly, what if i is... Oh, sorry. There shouldn't. So, what if i is 5? Therefore, our j is 7. So, what do we have here? Let's simplify. That's it. If We, can, we cannot get an i as 7 since we there doesn't exist any j which is strictly greater than it that is inside this set i. So let's finish this. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Um, 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. Um, 3 plus 5 is 8. Um, 3 plus 7 is 10, and 5 plus 7 is 12. Okay, so that's it. That's our values. 5, 7, times 9, times 8, times 10, times 12. So just get your calculator to get the answer here. This is going to be tedious if I'm going to show you the actual calculation. But get a calculator, and you will see that the right answer is 300. 2,400 and that will be our final answer in our example in the index summation. Okay, so that ends our lesson in notation. In this video, we have learned about the summation notation and the product notation and the indexed type of notations in both this, the sum and the product notations. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, see you soon in the next video. Bye.